guys, this is Wences. Welcome back to my channel where we talk about personal development for INFJs and creating an epic life on your terms. Today we're talking about INFJ anxiety and relationships, how to learn to receive. Because we all know if we're not careful, we go back into the mode of the caregiver, the consultant, the one who's always there to help the other one. And it's so hard for us to allow others to give to us. This is not something that only plays a role in intimate relationships. It's just the same way when it comes to friends or family. We have to learn to allow abundance in our life and to allow others to make our life easier. So today we're going to tackle exactly this topic and what INFJs can do to make this process easier. Before we get started, I want to remind you if you want to take the next step in creating your epic life, then work with me privately or join the epic life masterclass. First and foremost, we have to learn and to distinguish between what we want and what we assume others would like from us. So before you go into a new friendship, before you start dating somebody new, but it's not much different when you look at existing friendships and you want to change the dynamic within them. In all of those scenarios, we have to decide what we want out of this relationship. And we have to make that decision without considering what we can do for the other person. That is another topic for itself. But for now, we have to determine what is important to us. What do we need out of that friendship? What would we like others to care about? And to really write those things down because most of the time we're so afraid of even bringing these things up that we can never get to a point where we actually allow others to give it to ourselves. So before you make all of those plans, before you say, now I'm ready to change those dynamics, you have to say them out loud to yourself or to write them down. So let's say you're in a situation where you meet somebody new and and it's a possible dating situation, write down before what you expect out of the situation. You want the other person to care about your preferences, for the other person to listen to what you have to say, for the other person to be careful about your needs, for the other person to show interest in what matters most to you. And me saying that, I already feel guilty because in the back of my mind, this old voice comes up that says, no, you should care about what you give to them. You should care about what good of a person you are towards them. Isn't it selfish to think about what they can do for you? And so I know this feeling and I know that so many of us INFJs go through this and we have those patterns in our mind. And that's exactly why we have to make the needs we have and the things we want to receive crystal clear. First off, to us. You don't have to worry that you'll get to a point where you only care about taking and not giving. If your nature has been that you've always been over giving, then in any kind of relationships, friendship, family, intimate relationships, you always feel like you're giving 70 and you're getting 30 back. You don't have to worry that you'll get to a point where you just take. You might get in certain situations where this happens once or twice. Believe me, you'll be aware of it. You can then counteract and balance it out. But unless we're willing to go too far into the other direction, we will never find that balance. So if you want to change something about the way you've approached it so far, go that direction. And now let's talk about the anxiety that comes up. Anxiety doesn't happen from situations that we're used to. So if you've been in friendships where it's always been about the other person, if you've had crushes on people who sort of always needed your help, you always felt like you saw the superstar in them and they didn't see it in themselves and you wanted to just encourage them and it was all about how great of a person and they are, these kind of dynamics, they will not cause you anxiety because they're the kind of relationships you are used to. Those are the relationships I was used to. The things that really bring us anxiety are the things that are unknown to us. And there is no such thing as saying anxiety is a sign for something happening that is not good. Anxiety will happen because of the unknown. You don't know at this point if this is anxiety because something is telling you this is not the right thing to do or because it honestly is a new thing that you just have to go through. That's why it's so important to write down what you really want in step one. That's why we want to make them so crystal clear. And you can even have certain no-goes. For example, you don't want to have a partner who's always financially dependent on you. You don't want to have a friend who is completely not able to give anything back to you because they're just drowning in their own negativity. These things you can determine just as well as the things that you want to receive. Because then when these situations come up, 
that cause you anxiety because there's something new. Because now for the first time, you're going to hold on to those values of yours. When before we were so flexible, you know, INFJs are called the chameleons. There's a reason for it because we are always able to adapt to other people. We want to understand more of their worldview, more of how they experience life. But if you do that, you consequently have to give up those rules that you make up in the beginning. The moment you say, I'm going to stick to them. And these can be the things that you demand out of a friendship or a new relationship. It can also be the no goes. The anxiety will come up because at that moment, you're not used to demanding this and waiting for the other person to react. It's scary because at that moment, you're not in control of, oh, is this relationship going to work? Before it has been in a way, okay, this is what they want. I'm just going to give them exactly what they want, what they need. I will neglect my own preferences. How can this not work out? We all know it didn't, but now the table is turned. Now the relationship is different. Now you say, these are my no goes and these are my demands. These are the things I need. And if the other person isn't willing to compromise on these things, then this friendship or relationship isn't going to work. And this in itself will bring up anxiety for you. On the one hand, it may be anxiety of who am I to expect this from other people. But remember, you're not expecting anything from them. You're just saying, these are the expectations I have for people in my life. And if they just don't want to do that because that's not the right thing for them, then it's completely fine for you two to go your different directions. And this can also happen within existing dynamics. You will see, you can create completely new friendship dynamics, for example, with somebody that has been in your life forever, because now you demand those things. And maybe this friendship will be a little bit more distant than it used to, but it doesn't have to be a bad thing. I remember when it came to my best friend who was an INFP, when we were in our early twenties, we had a very unhealthy codependent relationship because I was only focused on what she wants. And I was always doing the things that she thought she needed at that moment. This wasn't good for her because then she focused even more on the pain that she was experiencing, for example. And it wasn't good for me on the one hand, because I wasn't caring about my preferences, but it also wasn't good for her from that perspective that I wasn't sharing who I was. I wasn't sharing my true gifts. It was all about my gift is the fact of what I can do for you. My gift wasn't the fact that I am and that I represent that and that my energy in itself is a gift already. That is where we want to go to. And once you learn that, then you learn how to receive correctly. And then we get to the next phase, which is how are you going to react when this anxiety comes up? What most of us do is we want to bypass this anxiety by creating fast emotional intimacy. For example, this again applies to friendships as well as intimate relationships. We want to be as close to the other person as we can. So we bypass all of this fear of, is this person really going to like me for the things that I want and I demand? And how does this happen? This emotional intimacy, very often it's a one-sided intimacy or it's an intimacy where it's not really coming from your authentic self because it's always based on how can I understand this person better? I give them exactly what I want. And through that, I create a very intimate bond. I make the other person dependent on the image I represent to them. That is a typical INFJ reaction. This is something that I've done many times in my life. And I didn't even see that it was something that I shouldn't be doing. I thought this is the natural thing, not knowing that I was afraid of the rejection, that I wasn't thinking that my life could be exciting enough if I stuck to my preferences and I sort of forced the other person, if they wanted to be in my life to adapt a little bit towards me. It is not always about the fear of not getting the recognition back. It's often also because we don't feel that our life is going to be exciting enough. That is something that always goes away once you go through that anxiety. So I've been in a situation where this anxiety came up and what happened was that because I didn't want to deal with that anxiety, I acted too fast. I went into a dynamic where I was giving up what was important to me in order to avoid this uncomfortable feeling. But when I do that, I already deny the relationship, the chance of authenticity. See, I've experienced really deep emotions in my life and it wasn't always because I was authentic. Don't 
believe because you have very strong emotions towards somebody or you like somebody very much, don't think that this is based on an authentic connection with you. Because if the other person doesn't know those sides of you, those things that would make you happy on your own, then they can never give you a feedback if they want this in their life or not. So what happens next? Well, you stick through that anxiety. You don't make any decisions out of a place where you're still in that anxiety. You stay in this feeling until you feel okay with it. Remember, in order to heal something, we have to feel it. So the anxiety has a lot to do with the fear of what's going to happen. And if you stay in this fear state, but from perspective of being open to it and accepting it and seeing that this doesn't make you less valuable, that this doesn't have to be that you love yourself less. A lot of ways to deal with this anxiety is, for example, with EFT, you know, tapping, which helps you to regulate anxiety. Because in the end, it pretty much comes down to, although the other person could reject me, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Or something like, although I'm afraid my life will be completely boring if I care about what I want and not what the other person wants, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. We get to a point where this anxiety loses its power. And only once this anxiety is gone, you can make a rational decision if this relationship is worth having in your life. You'll see afterwards that maybe this anxiety has gone, but that person doesn't help you grow. This person isn't really enriching your life. That the reason why you wanted them in your life is because they give you an outlet for your nurturing nature, for your caring personality, whatever it might be. We want to have friendships where every single person is complete as much as we can, of course, where we love ourselves and then we connect with each other. We don't want to create any kind of relationships where it's all about what I can do for the other person and that's why I'm being liked. And I used to be in a place where I didn't even think that this was possible in the first place. So I'm so happy I'm here now. I was able to overcome this anxiety and I'm not making any decisions anymore when this anxiety comes up. And anxiety comes up every single time I get to challenge one more aspect of myself that I don't want to take responsibility for, that I didn't want to take on up until this point. I get to stay in this anxiety. I get to go through it and then I get to heal it. And then afterwards, I feel fine either way. And I can make rational decisions if this really benefits my life or it doesn't. I really hope that helped you and inspired you to allow yourself to receive great things in life because the more energy you get, the more your cup is overflowing and the more you can actually give without expecting back. Remember, if you wanna take the next step in creating your epic life, then work with me privately or join the Epic Life Masterclass. And if you wanna watch another video now that is in line with today's topic, watch the last video on INFJ dating, what INFJs need to know. Like always guys, I wish you a wonderful day, a great week, and I talk to you next time. Bye.